Today, I wanna to make a little bit more of a casual video where I sit down and talk about my camera situation because I have unfortunately broken yet another 35 millimeter camera and I have also bought a very nice replacement for it that I'm excited to show to you guys. As you can probably tell by the greenery behind me, I'm not on the West Coast. I'm back home in New Jersey because every summer I like to come out here and just spend a little bit of summer time on the East Coast. So I've been road tripping to the Outer Banks and in a week or so I'm heading upstate New York, which I'm really excited about. Unfortunately, on this Outer Banks trip, I haven't had the best camera luck and I broke my Voigtlander Bessa T, which I talked about recently in a video. And I'm making this video to kind of talk about this camera situation, not because I want people to be like, oh, look at me, boo-hoo, he broke a camera, but because I've praised these cameras in the past, both the Voigtlander Bessa R and the Bessa T. I've made videos with them. I've talked about how they're a more affordable alternative to M-mount Leica cameras. And so now later down the road, when things don't go as planned with these, I feel obligated to update you and share that information because clearly I've not had the experiences with these cameras that I would have hoped for. So this is my third Bessa now. I've owned two Bessa R's and this Bessa T. And by now I've probably spent more money on these Voigtlanders than I would have just buying a Leica M6 from day one. I bought my first Bessa R many years ago and I really liked shooting with that camera because the viewfinder was super bright, it felt very mechanical, super nice to use. And most importantly, it was a little bit more affordable because I personally feel a little strange for an everyday camera wearing like a $2,000 Leica. So that's why I was interested in those Bessa cameras. And my first one broke because the shutter mechanism locked up. And I thought that was maybe my luck of the draw. And so I decided to buy a used replacement. Unfortunately, with the used replacement, not too much longer, did I get the same exact issue. And I was a little weirded out by the fact that I had the same issue twice, but I really liked the camera and I decided to give it one more shot with this Bessa T, which now unfortunately has had the same issue for the third time. The shutter on the camera is completely locked up. The camera won't advance. And I've tried everything from replacing the battery to cleaning the lens contacts and even as kind of a last resort trying to manually move the shutter mechanism with my fingers and none of those things have worked so this is unfortunately another one for the graveyard what's unfortunate about the situation is that each time this has happened i have actually brought them to a repair technician who specializes in rangefinder cameras he was trained by leica in germany and he says that each time this has happened they're basically unrepairable because you have to replace the entire shutter mechanism, which is significantly more expensive than buying another Bessa. So it's safe to say that I think I'm done with these Bessa cameras for a while. Now I have talked to people online about the Bessa R2A series of cameras, which is significantly nicer than these. And people don't seem to have that issue with those. Like I said, I'm not making this video to complain, but more rather so because I feel obligated to tell you when something like this has happened to me, especially when I've just said good things about these cameras in the past. Now, my situation could still be by chance, and I'm sure there's people who have had these cameras and have had great luck with them for an extended period of time, but I have ordered a replacement that's no longer a Voigtlander, and I'm gonna show you what it is. This is my Lights Minolta CL. And the reason I bought this is mainly because it's a very similar style of camera to my Bessa T, and I could just throw my lens onto the new camera body because they both share the same Leica M mount. This is co-developed between Leica and Minolta, and you can feel that this camera just feels amazing in hand compared to the Bessa. The Bessa feels quite plasticky, it feels a little cheaper, Overall, the build quality and the shutter mechanism do not feel anywhere near as good as this Lights Minolta CL. I wanna compare it to an M6. It feels very similar. 
The viewfinder is not quite an M6 viewfinder, but that's okay because I won't be using it for my 35 millimeter lens because this does not have 35 millimeter frame lines. So just a little bit of a closer up look at the camera here. What's funny is that the light metering sensor is actually in front of the shutter. And every time you take a photo, it moves out of the way before the shutter opens, which is just so strange. Comparing the two cameras side by side, you can see that the Bessa is maybe just an inch wider than the Lights Minolta. What's awesome about this camera as well is that unlike the Bessa or the other cameras that I own, this is a fully mechanical camera as far as the shutter and lens go. So you can shoot this thing without a battery. The only thing it needs a battery for is the actual light meter. So I quite like that for the sake of reliability because I've had a couple trips in the past where my cameras run out of battery. And although you can always carry an extra one with you, it's a little bit annoying in the moment. And for the sake of reliability, which is what I care about now, I think a mechanical camera is just significantly better for what I need. One thing I really missed on the Bessa T is that it does not have a hot shoe. It is literally just a cold shoe on there. Whereas the Lights Minolta does have a hot shoe and you can actually use this with a flash. Now, the thing that's super strange about loading this camera is that when you pull it apart, the camera literally splits into two pieces. And I haven't decided yet if I like this or not because it does detach your strap. And I think this does make loading a little bit more tricky than just something like an M6 where just the base plate comes off. As I do in all of my videos, of course, I'm gonna go out and shoot a test roll with this camera at the beach in New Jersey, like the good old days on this channel, revisit some coastal towns that I used to photograph. And although the weather is not ideal today, it'll still be a good way to just get a test roll done through this camera to see that it actually works properly before I continue on the rest of my trip. Back in New Jersey, and it's raining. Made it to New Jersey to a beach town that I used to photograph a lot when I lived out here. And although it's raining, I really do just want to get a test roll in with this new Lightsman Ulta CL. So that's what I'm going to do. These photos are probably going to be dog water, but it's for the sake of testing the camera. So hopefully it all works. I once made two of my favorite images from the year back to back consecutively, literally one frame next to the other on a roll. That is a very rare occurrence in life. And the spot definitely doesn't look as good anymore, but I'm gonna go re-photograph it just for fun. Maybe five years ago today, I took a photo right here. That one was right there, and there's one more right back here. Obviously, the light's very different, but at the same time, the buildings have also almost all changed color. So it's really cool to see and come back here like five years later. I have found one major flaw, which is that you need to remove the base plate every time you want to change your roll. Maybe this was a mistake. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Look forward to more New Jersey videos, which should be coming out here shortly, as well as the Porsche project. Thank you so much for watching. 
And finally, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an incredible all-in-one website building platform that you can use to build your photography portfolio online. I've been using Squarespace for so many years now and they've made it so easy to get a website up and running with my photography. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can hit the link in my description for a 14 day free trial of Squarespace. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com Willem for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain.